Okay, welcome to the next session of Introduction to Programming, and now we're going to see everything about variables. It's not entirely right, not everything, we're going to see the most important things about variables. So when we, when we uh, had our examples uh, in chapter 1, for instance, we already used int for integer, float for floating point, and there are several of those variables and uh, or types, and that is what we're going to see today. How to initialize them, but also what they can be, what they really hold, how it works inside a computer, and so on. Now let's start with that last bit, how variables are put into a computer. Now when you have, once you have your program, your program is somewhere over here in memory. And when you assign a variable, as we did for instance with int uh, n, you know, for uh, our number of cards in our example, then somewhere here in memory, a little bit of memory was reserved for exactly that, for a bit of uh, uh, memory that can hold a number. And for an integer, for our n for instance, we know that in C or C++, uh, an integer is of a specific type, integer, and holds a particular memory address. And this memory address, in this case for an integer, is uh, 4 bytes. So we have a byte here, and a byte here, a byte here, and a byte here. Now, one byte is 8 bits, and because of that, one byte can hold 256 different values. Usually, we think of it as going from 0 to 255, for instance. And if you add all of those together, you can get a really nice big number here that you can represent in a binary fashion. But that is not too important yet now. What is important, however, is that any variable that you can initialize this way, like in this case, int myvar, myvar is the name of a piece of memory and it is of type integer. This is something that is the most important. Secondary is that this memory is limited. So if you have a really big number here, it might be that it's, uh, if you add a little bit to that, you don't, or you're not able to represent this in four bytes anymore. And then you'll have something that is called an overflow, but more about that later. Now the size of the variable depends on its type. So integer just has four bytes. Other types of, uh, uh, of types could have uh, completely different uh, a number of bytes somewhere in memory. But memory is usually um, has usually cells where one cell is one byte. That's how we'll think of it at the moment. Now here is a table which with the most uh, used types that you could have. So you have your integer, which is 4 bytes, and this is what we use, usually use for an integer number. So as I said already, it's minus 10, minus 3, 0, 4, 17, and so, on, and so on. The size does depend on the machine usually, but I think for most uh, programming environments you can assume that this is about 4 bytes. Now you have not only an int, you also have a short int, which is just 2 bytes. Again, this is for exactly the same type of numbers except you have only half the space in memory reserved for it, which means that you probably can't uh, store as big numbers as in the int, uh, um, uh, as is an int variable. And at the same time, you also have a long int. Now, long int was in, for the olden days when you needed more space. In this case, however, our long int is exactly the same as our integer. So both of them are basically integers, and both, both of them are in, exactly the same. Now our float is also 4 bytes, but the way these 4 bytes are interpreted is completely different. Um, for instance, for an integer, the way we usually think about them as in an unsigned way, you start with a 0, then a 1, then a 2. Now for a float, however, this is a little bit uh, more, a little bit differently organized. We'll see more about that later, but I think for now it's better to just think of it as a piece of memory that holds 4 bytes that it's designed to hold uh, a floating point. A double is exactly the same, but has a lot more precision. So a double is double the size of a float, hence the name, um, and can therefore hold bigger numbers or more precise numbers. Because remember, for floating points, we have also digits behind um, the dots. So those are the, the ones that we already saw as well, or at least the float we've seen. 
And there are two more that have only one byte that, are, that is being reserved in memory. The first thing is called a character or a car, and this character has only one byte. Now those are a little bit special because also that is an encoding that allows us to, for instance, deal with characters. Characters like uh, a 5 or an A or um, a, a D, all these uh, representations that are not numbers, but basically representations that we can have on our screens, are fit, fit in a character. And then finally we have a Boolean value, like a true value, a truth value, so it's 0 or 1. Um, but in this case, our 0 or 1 is taking up an entire byte. This is a little bit strange, perhaps, if you think about it, because it could fit into one bit. Um, but the way our memory is organized is in usually bytes, and therefore uh, the least amount of space that you can, available, can have available for any of these variables is one byte. So we have our boolean, a character, a double or a float, and an integer. Now these are really four different types of variables. Our boolean is something that is either true or false, a one or a zero. So that has specific uh, functionalities. The same for a character. A character is to display uh, a piece of a word or a piece of a string, for instance. That is something else. A float or a double is usually a floating point, and an integer is an integer, a number that is not a floating point. Right. So when we usually have an int, then this is usually a signed integer. That means it starts at a very large negative number and goes all the way through zero, all the way to exactly that same very large high number. If we don't want to have negative numbers in our variable, we can also say unsigned, for instance, unsigned int, or in this case, unsigned short int, to make sure that this integer is starting at zero and just counts up. If we then try uh, to, uh, to subtract something from here, something strange will happen because you, will never, you won't get a negative value if you use this variable. Now, the way this happens in the, in the background or in memory is that you have, uh, in this case for a short int, um, two times one byte, so in total 16 bits. And the first or the most significant bit is then used for the sign. So if this is a one or a zero, it will be basically changing the, the whole number into a negative or a positive number. Now this goes further, you know, this is a uh, two's complement representation for integers. This is something you don't have to know, um, and I think for this course um, it's leading too far. But this will be uh, part of a next follow-up course. Now, once we have our types, our variable types, it is always important to know more or less how much you can store in that. So in our cards example, for instance, um, we knew or we, we got suddenly back this infinity, that means there are loads and loads of possibilities to uh, order 52 cards. Now, for a normal uh, integer, if we do it unsigned, we can reach a really large number um, um, for a normal integer. If, however, this is uh, a signed integer, we can only have half of them because we also need the negative uh, part of this. If you have a short integer, as I said already, we have only half the space available, but it also means we have only a very small amount of uh, numbers that we can represent. So it's either uh, 56,000 and a little bit uh, if we choose those to be unsigned, or if we choose those to be signed, it's exactly half of that, because we basically chop it in two and the rest goes into the negative part. The same goes for float or double, although here you can also see that a double contains a lot more um, or a lot larger numbers or can hold lot, lots larger numbers in the floating points. And the character and the bool, um, those are simple. The boolean is true or false. The character contains particular uh, character values. Okay, now we never in C or C++ check for overflow and this is not the same in many other programming languages so this is something that you really need to be aware of. So if you have an integer for instance, and let's give a, immediately an example, so let's go back um, and start a new CPP, let's call it overflow.cpp um, I'll 
give the very short description uh, demonstrator. There we go. Um, we have to include our stdio, I would say. Uh, stdio stream. I'm a little bit confused. There we go. And we have our main function. Oops. We basically just write out something. So and we write out two words C out um, and this end line is to make sure that it starts then at the next line at the end. Let's make sure that our indentation, indentation is pretty good. So let's define a short int and make this short int already quite large. So as we see here, our short int, if we just have it as a signed integer, uh, is 32,767. Now say that it's 32,000. So we have our number, for instance, and we assign to that 32,000 as a number. Oops. There we go. Um, we write on our number is, and we write num over here. Now what we're going to do in the next statement is we're going to do add to num thousand more. So now we assume, since num is a short integer, that it won't fit. So once we have our 32,000 plus 1,000, this will never fit anymore in our short int. And then let's see what is going to happen. So we'll paste this over here. And then return a zero. There we go. Let's see if this works. First of all, we start here again. Um, we had as our CPP file overflow, and let's just output over. Oh, over. Doesn't matter. Over also works. So if you do over, you'll see that once we started, we started with a very high number. We added to that a thousand, and suddenly we end up with a negative number. This is because it basically just overflew and went back to the beginning. The same can happen when we have a large number that is unsigned. So let's do that quickly. Oops. How do I get rid of this? There we go. No. There. No. Yes. Control C when you have that. Um, so when we have, in this case, an unsigned short integer, and we'll make it a little bit bigger, so it's 65,000. 65,000 we can still hold in these two bytes. The question is what happens if we add 1,000 to that? So let's save that and try that one more time. So we have to compile first, of course. And as you can see, it's, there is an overflow, but instead of starting at a negative number, it starts at a zero again. So this is something that is, can be very dangerous. And this is, for instance, the reason why um, at the year 2000, some computer programs had a problem because their, um, their variable did not hold until the year 2000. So it's always important to know the limits of your variables and I think in C and C++, this is done in a very straightforward way. If you keep on thinking about it in this way, you should not get into trouble. And even if you get into trouble, you should find your solution very fast. Right. So this overflow is something that is, um, that is really important. And also the precision of floating points is limited. So unlike uh, in many programs that are dedicated for math, for instance, um, the float and the double values have a different type of precision, and this precision can some, sometimes uh, be very problematic. However, in our programs that we will see this semester, this won't be a problem yet.
This is just something to be careful of. Right, now how do we declare a variable? Now as you, can, as you saw over here already, I basically gave them a little name, usually without capitals in my case, um, but you can actually use capitals, but then the capitals also matter. So if you, for instance, assign a variable the name my age with a capital A, then if you later on uh, use a my age without a capital A, you'll get into trouble because the compiler will see those two things as completely different, even though we might see exactly the same words. Now, the name of a variable can be any of those following characters, A to Z, uh, or A to Z, capital or non-capital, it can have numbers and it can, have an, it can have an underscore. That's about it. The names can never start with one of the digits. No, so never start with a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 or 9. Uh, other than that, almost anything else is allowed. What you're not able to use, however, is also the keywords that are already known for C and C++. So int for integer, if or while, those are things we'll see later. Um, cannot be used because those are already in use. So those must be kind of new names that we will uh, see there. Right, what we can do when we declare a variable, we can declare multiple. So here in this case, we declare the variable my age and we declare the variable my weight, and those are both unsigned integers. So once we do that in our main function, for instance, we reserve two pieces of memory for our program, one uh, four bytes for my age, and another one which is four bytes for my weight, and both of them hold an integer. And the same for area, width, and length. Those are three particular variables. They are of type long, which is the same as long integer, and um, that means also there uh, you reserve four bytes for any of those three variables somewhere in memory. Now, when you create the names for variables, you have to make sure that it doesn't get extremely long. This is one of the common, more common problems after a while. But you also have to make sure that the names make sense. This, you know, having sufficient intellectual distance, I think, is very important because if you choose your names correctly, it usually tells a lot about what you're having there as a variable. Uh, for instance, my age, my weight, and my size in centimeters, I assume, uh, tells me a lot already, and I don't have to do that much commenting to really show the programmers that come after me or myself in a few weeks what I was thinking there. Um, so sometimes uh, you can have, uh, with very well-chosen names, very good things. If you would have chosen those variables as x1, x2, and x3, then this is a lot worse, I think, as a, as a naming um, choice. Right. So there is an assignment. Whenever we create a variable, we assign it a type. So in this case, we have our variable width, and this is of type integer. So once we've done uh, the compiler, or the, the computer went through this line, um, we have now four bytes in our memory reserved for this integer that we call the name width. And later we can assign this variable width a value, and this is called assignment. So in this case, we assign um, to the variable width the value 5. So after that, all the instructions that come after that will know that width has a value 5. We can do this in one go, and this is usually great because if you don't do this, width over here could have any value whatsoever. Because remember what happened, you usually, when, I, when you uh, initialize or when you um, create a variable, then four bytes are somewhere res reserved. Those four bytes could have been already used beforehand and then given back again to the, to the system and could have hold any type of information. So we don't know what value width will hold in that case. So it's usually a lot smarter to already initialize the variable straight when you create it. Then there are also constants. Now constants are something that we've used as well. So in this case, for instance, this uh, 65,000 is a constant. Um, you can start them with an O for an octal notation. You can start them with a 0x for a hexadecimal notation. This is something we won't do uh, too much. Um, oops, let me quickly do this. 
Um, we have our, uh, we, our, our rotations for doubles, also that we're not going to use too much. What we will use is actually true and also false for our booleans. When we have a character, we can um, assign a character value uh, by a number. This is also possible, but you could also assign it the actual character by having the single quotation marks. Um, and later we will see also a string. This is also something we've already used, so the double quotations are used for a string. There. So we can use those just as we've, saw, we've already seen in our examples. So in this case, if classes is an integer of value 2, uh, then students will become uh, 2 times 15, 30. And that's, that's how it, how it then, uh, works. The same for other things. Um, so once we have our constants like this one over here, we can actually have also um, constants that we assign as a constant. In that case, we can assign a constant by uh, putting the const keyword in front of what we normally would have done for an initialization of an end creation at the same time of a variable. So once you have this, you create a variable with the name students per class of the type unsigned short integer, and you assign it the value 15. Now, if, however, in the rest of your program, you never want to change this again, you want to treat this as a constant, you just have to put constant in front of it. And that will make sure that no one else can uh, change this value anymore, and that you can also, instead of constantly using this 15, you can actually use something per, perhaps a bit more meaningful. So the advantage is that it's more readable. I think that is the, uh, the, the, the better advantage. An additional advantage is that the compiler can do the check on these constants. If you would have done, done it without the constants and somebody later or you yourself would have changed this, it would have been possible. But by adding the const, this uh, would result in an error. Right. Then there's a few other things that, we, that are not so important. The fact that we can enumerate uh, variables um, is something that we will use much later, but maybe you can already keep this in check. This is something that we will see later. Um, then we result, there's also a way of defining um, constants another way with uh, preprocessor definitions. This is something we'll never do in this course for the beginning, although it is actually quite useful for, many, for several things. And that is uh, almost the end of our chapter. So to rehearse the most important things, um, if, you, if you create your variable, you're assigning a bit of space in memory somewhere. And this memory space has a certain size and is interpreted in a certain way. And its interpretation depends on what type you give it. So if this is an integer, it's, in, it's uh, uh, interpreted in this way. If this would have been uh, an unsigned integer, it would have been interpreted in a completely different way. Um, or something else, a float is also 4 bytes, for instance, it's also completely differently interpreted. So if it has the same 0 and 1s in memory, then if this is an integer or a float or a, an unsigned integer, all of those three would have given you different types of values. So the interpretation is linked to the type. And also important is to know about how you can declare the variables, which names uh, you need and how this is done. And as I said, you always need to add, or I didn't say this yet particularly uh, specifically, but you always need to add a semicolon at the end. I've already done this in my code as well. I hope you then somehow pick up on this. And names can contain digits, uh, characters from A to Z, and underscores, but it's important that you can't start with a digit. Um, it can also not have the same name as something that is already used in C or C++. And then we have constants. So constants are variables that you cannot change anymore. There are several literal constants that you can use in your program as is. What we will usually use is the, uh, the strings, um, the single characters, uh, true and false for booleans, and the numbers. Um, the other things we probably won't use that much at all. And when we um, assign or when we uh, use a constant in our program, we'll usually do it this way. It's as if you would um, start a new variable and assign it directly a value, and then you add the const keyword in front of it to make sure that you cannot change it anymore and that it's treated as a constant.
right, this is it for this chapter. So uh, this already means that we can already start the exercises. In the next uh, session, I will show you what exercise we will start with and uh, I will repeat some of the things that are very important for it.